15 Sports with Ben Creighton. Texas battles for the Southwest Conference title during the regular season. Right down the wire. And fastball hit deep to right field. Way back there. That ball is gone. Throw it off the wall. And still it's flying. All three runs for the game to tie. On drive, center field, base hit, insurance run comes across in the presence of PC Martin. And the drumbeat continues. Good game for Arkansas. They take care of Texas. When asked about the rivalry between Arkansas and Texas, Dave Inhorn downplayed it, saying it's like playing another good program and that there's no extra excitement. But you know both fan bases are going to be hyped whenever the Hogs and Horns meet up. It's tradition from those old Southwest Conference days. Unfortunately, ESPN rules say we cannot show the highlights because the game is still going on. The last update we've been able to get has Texas leading Arkansas 7 to 5 in the seventh inning. It was a little bit like deja vu early on. Arkansas got out to a hot start, getting out to a 4 0 lead in the second, but Texas has been able to charge their way back into this one, looking to snap a four game skid against their old conference foes. Arkansas Pine Bluff on the road looking for a win against Ole Miss. And on the bump for the Rebels, this is pretty cool. Pine Bluff native Caleb Hill just last year played his high school ball over at Watson Chapel. The Rebels' bats were hot all afternoon. Bottom one with the bases juiced. Ryan Olenek lifts to it into deep right center. That'll bounce off the wall for a ground rule double. Ole Miss takes a 3-0 lead over the Golden Lions. Now 7-0 Ole Miss. Bottom three, Greg Kessinger. Rips it down the line on the hit and run. That's going to roll all the way to the wall. That's going to bring in another run. He'll get the wave home, and the Rebels take an eight to zip lead. And it didn't get any prettier for the Golden Lions. Same inning, Tyler Keenan belts one into right field, and it's a no doubter. Two run blast gives Ole Miss a 10 run lead. And you know what? I think we can end the highlights here or the lowlights, I guess. Rough afternoon for UAPB, 25 to nothing. Ole Miss W. I don't know about the rest of you, but it is always satisfying when you prove people wrong. And that's what the Hogs were able to do last night by taking down Providence in one of their best performances of the entire season. No Daniel Gafford? No problem. Not having their star big man who announced he wouldn't play in the NIT after declaring for the NBA draft allowed a lot of guys like Reggie Chaney, Ethan Henderson, and Gabe Osaboyan to step up big time in the Hogs' 12-point win to help them advance. A fire was also lit underneath this Razorback squad because they wanted to prove the doubters wrong and that they can win without DG. That definitely motivated us. We knew that that was, that was a case if we lost we didn't have Daniel and they knew we was going to lose, but if we won, they would have like, they probably said we got lucky or something, but we was definitely motivated coming in this game. This team here uh, has some adversity coming in here, uh, but I thought it enabled these guys to really kind of band together and you could see the focus. Uh, it was like the sum of all the parts and all the parts played well, so therefore we had a pretty good out. As the Razorback women prepare to face Houston in the WNIT, Malika Monk continues to battle through pain. The North Little Rock product, who's been dealing with a hand injury since February, is averaging 12 points per game and leads the team in total assists. And obviously, she'll continue to fight through the injury as she looks to help carry this Razorback team far in the postseason. Her hand is still hurt. It's going to be hurt till she can get it fixed, but she has learned to manage it. Um, you watch her, she shoots it a little bit differently. Um, and I told her the other day, she may shoot a little bit better. So we should have broke her hand, I guess, a little bit earlier. But uh, she's just a warrior. She's tweeting. Can't wait to be back in Bud Walton. She loves this place. She's an Arkansas kid. And I'm glad that we get to play here one more time for her. Meanwhile, the Little Rock women are putting on their dancing shoes once again. They'll be leaving bright and early tomorrow morning for Corvallis, Oregon, as they'll face Gonzaga in the first round of the NCAA tournament on Saturday. Now, right after the Trojans learned of their opponent on Selection Monday, I asked head coach Joe Foley if he had any early knowledge of the Bulldogs before they began preparations. We know they've lost a couple of players. They lost one in the tournament. They won a little bit a couple, of, a couple of weeks ago, so they're down a couple. But they've got such great tradition and great program. Uh, it'll, be, you know, it'll be an obstacle, but it's not one that you can't overcome, I don't think.